of Kazakhstan coming up alongside the last of those Lidl Trek riders. Edward Turns right up there already. Little bit too soon, dare I say. Ed Turns sitting second wheel. Matteo Trentin, the first of the Tudor Pro Cycling riders there, and the, by the looks of it, Alpus, sorry, I do apologise, Jaco Alula just getting muscled out of it. One or two of the riders also having to take to the footpath. They're going to have to be careful there. Bora Hansgrohe come again. And we've got Alpers into Koenig now quietly preparing themselves up the inside. Jasper Philipson just riding up the outside as well, trying to get onto the back wheel as well. Not quite making it either. Tight right-hand turn into this narrow one. We saw this last time through. Final three and a half kilometres in, and it's, it's messy already. Caden Groves now showing that he is part of that lead-out train, but he's lost Jasper Philipson. Very, very chaotic at the moment. If anyone manages to get two or three riders together in the final kilometre, they're going to be in a very, very good position because not one team has the full lead-out train in position at this moment. Just over three kilometres to go. Tudor with three riders. Lidl getting more fire to the front. But right now, just ones and twos all over the place. Oh, this is messy. Caden Groves now constantly looking back, but the others don't want to take it up just yet. And who takes it up? Sudar Quickstep. Gianni Moscon now driving through, but even he's looking round. So many of the riders have lost their train here. Tim Merlier is down in about 10th place. He's got Tim Dupont on his wheel as well. Just behind him is Caden Groves now, having dropped back a little bit. Messi at the front end. No one team has been able to really dominate this either. Where is Jasper Philipson? Caden Groves, I think, has picked him up again one more time, Ian, by the looks of it. And now it's uh, DSM Fermanek post NL who have good numbers up there. Case ball being brought back right to the front by... Um Gleb Siritza, but he's up there too soon. No one wants to start too soon. Two and a half K to go. Most of these best top sprinters only have one or two lead out riders left and no one wants to burn them too soon. Exactly that. It's going to be all about timing with the firepower that you have left. If you've only got one guy left, they want to launch with a roundabout kind of five, 550 metres to go no earlier. And so uh, they're all wanting to get to the front for a good position, but no one wants to take it on. And no one seems to have enough riders left to really hit out. Little Trek on the left, Jaco Alula on the right. Yeah, Jaco Alula with Dylan Kronenbergen in good position. He's the third of those riders with the blue top yellow base to it. Max Valscheid leading just between the two of them as well. It's uh, Luka Mezgetz. So Luka Mezgetz is going to be the last man for Dylan Kronenbergen. Dylan Kronenbergen with the 81 on his back. Watch them down there. And here comes Alpers in de Koenig. The number one on his back is Jasper Philipson. Last year's victor, of course, in this race. Winner of that brilliant edition of Milan San Remo this year as we close in on Paris-Roubaix where he was second to Matt of underpole one year ago now now we have dsm Fermanek post nl with one two three four riders casper van uden is the fourth of them but have they got themselves into good position too soon crash oh dear right at the back um simon sanjok was down there as well the the uh, polish rider for q36.5 i hope he's all right right in the gutter at the edge right uh, Alperson de Koenig now being forced to take things up. Second rider is Simon de Hez. And Jasper Philipson, oh, pu pulling a foot out there by the looks of it as well. One of the riders, so Messi coming towards the finish. It is um, Sudar Quickstep, though, who now swing off. This is going to come down to a battle by the looks of it between uh, Bora Hansgrohe and Alperson de Koenig. Where is Jasper? Jasper Philipson now on the back wheel of... Um, Hofstetter, Hofstetter, oh, Etimar Einhorn is up there as well, the Israeli champion. Gosh, there's so many riders in play for this final sprint. Bora Hansgrohe are going to open up for the last time. Danny Van Poppel on the front. Here goes Tim Malir. Malir is off, though. Malir leading down the inside up against the barriers. Here comes Groenewegen. Has Groenewegen got enough to come back at Tim Malir? Where is Philipson? Philipson's going to be beaten. Tim Malir gets his revenge. He said at Brugge de Panna that he would not go easy on Philipson the next time. And boy, has he had his legs do the talking as well. Tim Malir takes his opening win in Schelder Preis. We say it's the unofficial sprinter's world championship and the best, uh, the winningest sprinter in the world this year, if not the best, I'll leave that one to you to decide, is definitely Tim Malir.
Once again, Malia just showing that he is the fastest sprinter in the world. He showed time and time again at the UAE Tour and at once again today just seemed to catch everyone napping ever so slightly. Just went a little bit early and he's so explosive that he gets that gap straight away and just no one can come back to him. That was a very impressive, a classic Malia sprint in a way, Ian, in that once he's able to open up from the right distance, he is close to unbeatable, isn't he? It's just getting him into that position in the first place. That was, I am very much looking forward to you, you talking us through that final kilometre or so, because, uh, gosh, it was, um, it was interesting, wasn't it? We had an awful lot of riders. In a way, this finish, because it's so wide and open, it provides an opportunity for the real kind of bubbling and boiling at the front end of the peloton. We have so many teams with their preferred sprinters there in play. Um, we said that Sudan Quickstep, dare we say it, despite the fact that he's now got seven wins this season, Tim Malia, as a team in this the thick of classics action in the run-up to Paris Roubaix, they could do with this win. They got it. Let's have a look at it again, Ian. Absolutely. Here we see from the overhead, it's uh, Bora leading out. Tim Malia then jumps and jumps really, really hard and immediately just in those first few pedal strokes just opens up a bike length, two bike lengths, three bike lengths. Dylan Groenewing tries to come across to get into the slipstream. That's only when Phillips and managed to get out, get out to the right-hand side and too little, too late from the Belgian to close in on Malia. Well, it looks as well from that shot that uh, Danny Van Poppel once again was Bora Hansgrohe's best rider. What a lead out. Uh, but it's fortunately, it was a lead out for this man, Tim Malia, off the bat with a puncture with just a few K to go, coming back into good place and getting an opportunity to really open up. What an aggressive sprint as he looks back at Jasper Philipson. We get a chance to listen in to the debrief from the Sudar Quickstep boys. Wilfred Peters, their sport director today, will be delighted with that. Um, I can't remember a sprint, Ian, even from his six wins so far this year, where he's looked as aggressive as that. I mean, facially, he was, that was, there was something really angry about that sprint, wasn't there? Definitely, we said uh, probably a little bit more fire in the belly after that Pugatapana incident where he felt as though uh, Philipson shut the door on him. That one cost him the win there, but left nothing to chance today. And with that wind coming from the right-hand side, it just meant that all the riders were hugging the left-hand side of the road. No one wanted to go out into the wind and take the wind too early. But Malia just managed to get up on the left-hand side and open up that gap. And then by the time Philipson could get out from that small pack behind, he just, yeah, ran out of road. He was definitely closing in on Malia, but Malia had already got the jump on everyone. And are pleased with it, of course, on a race which has started in the Netherlands. We could have had a Dutch winner today. Tim Malia, the winner, ahead of Jasper Philipsen, the two best sprinters in the world so far this year, no doubt about that. But Dylan Groenewegen coming good, ahead of Case Ball, Hugo Hofstetter, Soren van Schold, Sam Wellsford, Matteo Mossietti, one of two Italians in the top ten, Madish Michels and Matteo Trentin getting a fine top ten place.